everyone. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how I capture, edit, and render my Roxio game capture footage. So first of all, you should capture in the AVI format. Um, it'll be a large file size, but it, it'll be easy to work with and compress later on while rendering in Sony Vegas Pro. Uh, that's pretty much it for capturing. Uh, in options, you want to make sure your input is 480p, 720p, 1080i, and all that. Okay. Now, in Sony Vegas Pro, you want to open up your captured footage. Um, drag it onto the timeline. And so my project settings, if you go over here, this is how I have it set up. You want to select HDV. 720p or 720 by 60p, which is feet, uh, frames per second. You want to make sure it's 59.940 double NTSC frame rate, and it, all the, all of it's there. You you can copy it down if you want. Pixel format, 8-bit, full resolution, rendering quality, best, you know, Gaussian, blend fields, and that's all good. You can copy that down. Now the first thing you want to do to the clip itself, you want to right click on the video track, go to switches, and disable resample. Now this will make all the edges of things and just the overall video kind of smoother, because the Roxio game capture tends to have jagged edges in a lot of areas sometimes. And another thing you might want to do, you might want to right click and go down to switches and uncheck maintain aspect ratio if you have black bars anywhere. But you shouldn't. <clears throat> now for media effects, right click and click media effects. You're going to be using Sony Color Corrector, Sony Color Curves, and Sony Sharpen. Okay. Now for color corrector, I only do a very small change. I have a preset here. The only change is instead of saturation one, it should be, I set it to saturation 1.210, and that's the only change for this color corrector. So saturation 1.210. You don't want it too much. That is a very good level, I think. Uh, too much saturation, and it will look horrible, but I think that's a good number. Now for color curves, for most videos I use this color curve. Uh, you can try to copy that. Uh, one gray line here, move that there, right about there, and then the other gray line right about there. Now this is good for most video. It will make it nice and bright as you can see that that's a drastic improvement. Uh, but for some maps that are really bl bright, like snow maps, or just outdoors, like really bright maps, you might want to use a color curve that's somewhere like this, with a gray line here, and a gray line there, or even one that is right here. And I find that this color curve works great for a lot of videos also, especially if your footage is especially bright. Um, so you can try to copy that down, and you can set it as a preset, but I'll be using this one for this footage. And for Sharpen, uh, you only do a little bit, zero, change it from 0 to 0 0.015. And just that little bit really makes a difference. It looks great. Okay, so that's pretty much it for media effects. Uh, you're pretty much done editing this video. It looks good. It's not too bright. So render settings, go to render as, and you want to select Windows Media Video, uh, WMB, and select 6 megabytes per second HD 720p uh, video, <clears throat> and click custom. Now, audio should be fine, 192 kilobytes per second. That should be fine. Video, uh, 
these are the set these aren't the settings, but you want to change the frame rate to 59.94 double NTSC for the frame rate. Now you could do 30, but 59.94 will look slightly smoother. Uh, pixel aspect ratio one, you want to make sure your image size is 1280 by 720, high definition. And you want to make sure you change your video smoothness all the way up to 100. Uh, so the rest of that is fine. Bit rate, uh, you can use any bit rate between 5 megabytes uh, per second and 8. I usually stick with 6 most of the time. Uh, you don't have to worry about this. Project, you want to set video rendering quality to best. Okay, so you can look at this and pretty much copy down my settings here. That's all good. Um, audio, yeah. It is suggested that you change the seconds of the default compression buffer to 8. Um, after doing that, I haven't really, st uh, I can't really tell what the difference is, but it's suggested a lot. I don't know why. I, I really don't think you need to do that, but I'll do it anyway. It doesn't make the file size very much bigger at all. And so that is pretty much it for the render settings. And you can go ahead and save. So that's pretty much the end of this video. Please be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe if this tutorial helped you out. And be sure to check out the finished product. Um, I'll leave an annotation here. Thanks, and goodbye.